Hey guys, today we're going to build a bat house for you, a four chamber. Uh, I, I think we've got one of these on video before, I'm not sure, but some people just seem to like to watch me build bat houses. I get emails saying, are you going to build any more bat houses? And I, I guess I thought uh, once I filmed one and put it up there, that was it. But I, I guess I can appreciate people watching. Uh, I, I think they just want to see me nail myself to a bat house. And if we don't do more videos building bat houses, there's a very slim chance of you catching that. Um, don't want to nail myself to one, but uh, you know, you do woodwork and you're bound to get nicked every now and then. But I do have all my fingers and all my toes too. Of course, I wouldn't recommend running a table saw with your feet. But um, I guess I could drop a chisel or something, but I haven't done that. So let's put this house together. Again, this is a four chamber. Talk to you about what I'm doing as I go. We take our sides here and I fold them over. And what this does is it tells me where the adhesive caulk is going to be applied. Running a little low here. Going to have to change the tube in a minute. But at more than $5 a tube, I use every last ounce of it. There we go. Over here and repeat. Now I put the bead generally a little closer to the inside than the outside. And if we get squeeze out, it typically happens on the inside of the bat house, but that's not an issue. And I use 18 inch, uh, 18 inch, 18 gauge, 18 inch, yeah right, uh, brad nails to secure the side in place. And these temporarily hold the side in place. While we put the house together. And I put the side of the house just a little bit down, just a, a sixteenth of an inch or so down from the dado here. And that allows the roof to fold over a little bit easier when we're installing it. That's all there is to that. We go to our handy dandy wall of parts. And this is the end of the caulk. And one inch is a little long, so I toenail these in. Takes care of that. Now to change out the tube of caulk. Let's see if I can do this. You're supposed to change it out like you do a loaded one of those guns in a video game, right? You just tilt the gun down, bring it back up, and it's fully loaded. It works. Wow. Huh. Do that more often. I'll save a bunch of time. There we go. Put our beaded adhesive seal in here. Just like that. Now, come over here and we'll get a front. This is the front of the bat house. It goes grooves to the inside. That way the bat's clean to the inside, not the outside. Wouldn't want them to get confused. And I use my fingers to line this up because your fingers can see better than the eyes and get these flush. Go ahead and secure the top first. Get it flush. A little easier to move around that way. Now I pull the bottom 
into line. Nail it. Same thing over here. There we go. Take care of that. Now we have to put our roof brace inside here. A little bit of adhesive on it. And for this, I use a couple of spring clamps. Put it into place. And those will hold it long enough to get the screws in. Now we pre-drill. You do have to pre-drill. If you don't pre-drill, you will split the sides. Then we use inch and a quarter exterior grade galvanized screws to put the houses together. Set the torque here. Now the torque, that grinding sound that you hear when it bottoms out, keeps me from overdriving the screws. And then I just kind of give them a last little torque by turning the drill by hand. Just like that. Now for the front roof brace, I use one inch exterior screws and I cut just the tip of it off here. Uh, basically, I, I can't find any 7 8 inch. I found some 3 quarters, but they're just not long enough. So when I put these in, because half inch material is not quite half inch, the tip of it just barely pokes through and we wouldn't want the bats to get injured on that. So what I do is I just snip that point right off and without that sharp point, we don't have a problem anymore. And I need to take these points that I snipped off and throw them in the trash so that we don't pick them up again later. There we go. Now the front of the house is complete. Take the spring clamps off. You can see where the baffles are going to slide in. And if we can get another camera over here, you can watch me put the baffles in and put the roof on. We've got our baffles here. Hopefully they're going to slide in okay. We've had a little trouble with uh, consistency, a consistency on material thickness. Sometimes we get our 3 8 inch material or 11 32nd and it comes in thicker than it should be and it makes it hard to slide in. Sometimes we get it and it's even thinner than it should be. But I don't know what we can do about that other than just cope with it when it happens. And what happens here, we take these baffles and they slide in. Looks like it's going to go. Like I said, we've had some trouble with the thickness of these lately. And if I increase the size of the slot in the sides, then inevitably all of these come back too thin. <clears throat> what I'm going to do 
through here. Because these are so thick, you thin them down a little on the edges using a rasp. This is similar to what you do horse hooves with, actually. And if anyone from Georgia Pacific is watching, it would be really, really nice if we could get material with a little bit more consistent thickness. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and put the screws in the back while I have it here before we put the roof on. And again, this bottom one's always placed by eye. same inch and a quarter screws on the back. Probably use the drill driver would work better. There we go. roof on. Make sure they're all the way down. One here. Okay. And you can see in the top here there is some space that will be left over and that's why we call this a nursery house is this little bit of space when the the roof actually goes on this little bit of space here though it doesn't seem like much is actually a huge area for the bats to crawl into and the female bats can deliver pups here and let the pups hang out during the day um, stay warm and at night when the bats leave they'll be able to cluster together up here and stay warm put the roof on. Of course we seal it completely. Run some along the top of the dado here. Then I always try to remember to put a little dab here to help act as glue. Now I have a roof spacer, which is hiding at the moment. There it is. And this helps me get the roof just about centered on the house. Just stand it up in the dado and then fold it forward until it's against the house body. Then I take a screw, or a screw and nail, tack it in place. And now that it's nailed, we can add the three screws to the top here. What we'll do is we'll pre-drill. Okay, 
Yeah, the roof's on the front. It's time to finish up the back. We'll start, we have an integrated cleat. This integrated cleat uh, gives us a place to put up the matching cleat to it so that you can take that matching cleat, which I've got one right here. Once this is on, this is the matching cleat. You go hang this on the structure or the pole, then you can carry the bat house up and simply hang it on this cleat and put the screws in. Now this is not a final mounting solution. It is something that is there to help you hang the house and get it in position, keep it level. And it's not even required that you use it. You can simply uh, climb up there, hold it in position and put the screws in. If you like, it's just a hanging aid. And kind of the point to all that is, is you do need to secure the house using regular screws and not just rely on that cleat to hold it in place. Again, using the fingers to find flush. You notice I don't leave my finger there when I actually drive the nail. To much people out there that wish that I would leave my finger there. Um, something can happen that's called a blowout and when you do that the nail that you drive turns and comes out the side and if your fingers there it doesn't know the difference and it'll drive right into your finger I have done that before I don't plan on doing it again generally only once is enough to uh, teach someone not to do that twice Now, if there's anyone that would like to volunteer to step forward and demonstrate that for us, I suppose we could watch. I'm always crazy enough to watch somebody do something stupid. Now, the last three screws here go all the way through and grab the roof, and you'll be able to see this squeeze up. What I do with these screws is I don't pre-drill. Uh, I just let them pull themselves in and countersink themselves. But they go all the way through and they grab into the roof material over here. And hopefully we'll get this right. Set the torque on maximum. Or minimum. There we go. Now you can see that the screw countersinks itself and close that gap up. Then I'm going to repeat the same thing over here. There we go. The middle one. And there we have it. That house is finished. From here it'll get uh, cleaned up and ready for paint. I got a little bit of caulk I need to wipe off of it here. And it will be ready to be painted. That should do it. and ready to paint. If you got any questions, let us know.